Welcome back to the GSL. I'm Tasis, and with me is Artosis. Damn, we've had some good games today. Yeah, this is a great sick. day of games so far, and I don't think it's going to slow down any. No. Next, we have OGS The Wind, old school StarCraft 1 pro gamer. Uh, actually, a very much more accomplished pro gamer than was Nesty against Mecha Prime. Mecha Prime, of course, a very well known player in the StarCraft 2 esports scene. Yeah. He uh, was at BlitzCon with us. Just right. recently, he was also doing very well in Season 1. Actually opened up on the first day of Season 1. Yeah. Uh, really showing off his skills very early on. Of course, very popular even in the beta. OGS The Wind, of course, he is a former StarCraft 1 pro gamer. Very old school. One of the OGs. Um, not just of OGS, but the OG yeah. of Zerg itself. Original gangsta. He is definitely one of the guys that started out the Zerg metagame. And here he is today uh, doing the same thing for the Zerg metagame in StarCraft 2. That's right, and uh, actually a little funny side story before we get too technical. Uh, he was one of the first members of OGS, yes. which is, then OGS stands for Old Generations. It had him, Tester, uh, Fruit Dealer, and some other older players like uh, Hope Torture for a little yeah. bit. And so it was Old Generations, all these old programmers coming together, making new teams. Old school. And then most of the older guys left to other teams. And the win is really the only old guy, the only old guy <laughs> left on that team. Well, him and Nada, too, I guess you could say. Nada, that's true. Nada just yeah. showed up. That's right. I forgot about that. But, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Little, so funny. we got uh, Prime against OGS. These teams were rivals uh, in the Season 1 of StarCraft 2. We see a lot less Prime here in the um, Season 2 for GSL this time around. Yeah, everything's a lot more balanced this time. Yeah. Still a lot of OGS made in, but not as many making it to the round of yeah. 32 and beyond. Uh, I think it's just a much more balanced. You know, we have a lot of ST, IM... TSL, you know. EG, there's one EG. <laughs> EG is up there. You know, we got all sorts of teams making it in this time. Much more balanced numbers. Uh, the the teams I would give the biggest improvement to this season would be Nex and Zenith, which combined to Zenex. And I feel like that team has really stepped it up this time. But everyone else, kind of about the same as before. Just lower numbers for some, higher numbers for the other. Really very balanced scene right now. I'm, I'm quite liking it. Yeah, it's really exciting to see as the seed grows and expands. We have more players uh, from different teams. It's becoming much more diverse. We had more uh, non-Korean competitors than ever before. By the way, Loner is here in the studio. I just talked to oh, Coach Oh, you just saw him. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So he's actually he in the here. booth uh, just behind Ooh. us now. I just uh, got to the chills, far man. Right. I'm excited yeah. to see him play again after Yeah, BlizzCon. it's going to be our final game today. I can't wait to see how that's going to turn out. Loner, of course, getting second at BlizzCon. And, um, An amazing player, Loner. A very exciting uh, game against the, Next Genius. Best Chinese player, oh, no doubt far. about that. Got second in the BlizzCon World Championships. So impressive. But let's talk about him after this match. We have OGS Dope. Against Maka Prime. Here at Ruby's Gears. And here we have a shot of both of them. He is a corporal. Uh, I think they, I don't know what that really means. Like, what? Well, we got the round of. 32, that's how I thought. Anyways. Couldn't be because of that Mecha thing. Couldn't be because of age either. <laughs> <laughs> well, Platoon Sergeant for Mecca. And, uh, well, this should be just an exciting match. What can I say? Um, Mecca, one of the best Terrans in Korea forever. He loves esports to death. Uh, he was originally win. a War 3 pro. Or was uh, he actually, actually a pro he wasn't or just a pro. competitive player? He was, uh, he was described to me by uh, a nameless Warcraft 3 pro as top of the second tier of players in Korea, which means not pro. Let's take a look at the maps now. First set, Shakuras Plateau. Second set, Zelnaga Caverns. Third set, Scrap Station. Okay, uh, as far as I'm concerned, OGS the Wind get the better side of these maps. I think uh, so. I feel actually, like I Shakuras Plateau is, me being a Zerg player, my favorite map. Nice little sign right there. Very cute. We have artistic fans out there. Yeah, definitely. And then Zelnaga Caverns. I think that's just a good map overall. Yeah. Uh, early on, it can be a little bit hard to defend that expansion. Oh, absolutely. But it's a long map, so I think that I think that's one of the best maps that we have. And then, uh, of course, Scrap Station. You can't really attack Zerg very early on it. So a lot of people feel like it's quite a good map for Zerg in, for that reason. Yeah, they fixed it up a lot for Zerg. I remember early on in the beta, they did not have the destructible rocks. Uh, right away, mm -hmm. so that was a problem there too. Uh, they've done a lot of interesting stuff though. Blizzard has fixing these maps up, making them more playable, yeah. more balanced, and much more entertaining. So it's very exciting. Yeah, we're gonna get this game going here in just a little bit. I think uh, all the three of these maps, by the way, are very entertaining. As you said, that's actually yeah. one of the most important things that we have maps that are actually really fun to watch and play on. And I feel that way about all three of these maps. Yeah, so it's really cool. Um, Shakuras Plateau, one of the newer maps here. 
So that's kind of exciting. We're going to cast that first. Uh, and by the way, speaking of which, looks like our first game is about to start, so get ready. It's going to be sick. Down here in the bottom left, in the red, old school player. The wind up here at the top right. You know him very well if you've been following any StarCraft 2 whatsoever. His name, the one, the only, the legend himself. Backup Prime. Barely made it through that one. Honestly. I love Mac Prime for so many reasons. He's a friendly guy. Uh, he's goofy. He's, as that's could possibly be. That's a good word for. Him. Yeah, he's, no, he's a goofy, goofy guy. And uh, his name just rhymes with so much stuff and rolls off your tongue. Maca Prime. There's so much stuff that he's I can so say. fine. Tastes even better with a lime. Wow. If I had it on my cell phone, I'd make it my chime. Very right. cheap. He only costs a dime. It only costs a dime. That's not a crime. Not uh, all the time. We're poets and we weren't even aware of it. That is so bad. <laughs> I wish you'd stop saying that. It's so funny. <laughs> uh, the drone is now going to do scouting along with the Overlord. So he wants to get over here very quickly. He might try to do a gas deal, building an extractor, where the Terran would want to build a refinery over here on the Vespian gas geysers. That would limit the tech options for Terran. By the way, Terran having way more options than the Zerg in this matchup. Doesn't mean it's not fair, but it does mean that the Terran can do more stuff and surprise the Zerg. Yeah. And uh, it looks like the wind is probably going to go expansion first. You know, this is such a long map that it's very hard to actually punish a Zerg player for doing that. And we see on the minimap he has made that hatchery at his expansion. This drone, in the meantime, running around, would be smart, as you were saying earlier, Tasteless, to go ahead and take that geyser. It and really makes you feel a lot more confident as a Zerg player, I can say. In fact, back in the beta, I used to seal both geysers on small maps. That's sneaky. Yeah. He's going to block the add-on here. That's cool. Make him put out a Marine no matter what. Forest Marine, no Reaper shenanigans. Yeah. Expansion over here. If you get a slightly quicker Reaper, uh, it's a little bit better on this map. You can always go over there, kill any zer uh, slow Zerglings in the middle of the map, and uh, do a little bit of scouting. But he does slow that down, forces a Marine first. I'm surprised he did not take the gas. It's really not that expensive. Yeah, I really thought he was going to do that. Hmm. I feel like I've lost face now. Saying that he was going to do that, now he didn't do it, so... You haven't lost face with me. Thank you. Uh, the Zerg player, on the other hand, has. Because Tasteless was right. Stealing gas is awesome. It makes sense, man. Get that gas. It's like a permanent scout in his base for a while. Although he did at least get to check and see if, okay, he's going to get a tech lab and delay that and force that one Marine out. This will force, of course, that Reaper to be a scouting Reaper more than a harass-based Reaper. Yeah. And uh, scouting Reapers are awesome. That's like the best thing to use Reapers for right now in the game. Just hop one in, scout around. Sometimes you kill a drone or two, sometimes you get a couple Zerglings. And a Command Center just going to go up. This is becoming more and more standard in this matchup. Of course, there is no standard yet. There's so many ways you can play uh, TVZ. It's very stylistic. But making uh, one Barracks Reaper into Command Center is one of the better ways that we've seen. It's very economical, and the Reaper does so much for you as we have seen in other matchups, even earlier today. Uh, it scouts, gets rid of some Zerglings, and makes you feel just overall pretty safe. You have a lot of map presence with it, and therefore you know what's coming and what you have to defend against. The Reaper now on the move out. Queens, of course, making it very difficult for the Reaper to do any damage in areas where Creep is, because Zerg units do move faster on Creep. Mm -hmm. And just gonna hop up right about there. Check out what's going on. If you get the Reaper directly towards his base very quickly, you can actually shoot down the first creep tumor, which screws up everything for the Zerg. Yeah. It's huge. If you get the first creep tumor, it's. Yeah. I get so It's angry, actually man. much better than getting three drones, to be honest, because yeah. you're forcing the waste of larva inject, which means less drones later. And of course, if you're going to be uh, very aggressive, not having three tumors is going to hurt their ability to defend you. Now, this Overlord flying in to scout out exactly what's going on. Sees three barracks. He's going to see that command center, I do believe. Let's see it as you get it. Yeah, he sees, sees it. it. And that was a beautiful use of that Overlord. Completely worth it in every way. He knows exactly what's going on. At the same time, Mecha Prime knows exactly what's going on from all his scouting. And so, well, he didn't scout the very bottom left of the main, but 
overall, I think he has the general picture enough. So uh, both players in quite good positions right now. Except for that Reaper. <laughs> now that Reaper is gone. Didn't bring his lucky rabbit's foot there. Uh, Reaper's been taken out. Terran. It's like a Warcraft 3 item. <laughs> Purchased Lucky with Lucky Rabbit's foot. <laughs> At the BJ shop on Metalopolis. <laughs> <laughs> Marauder and a few Marines. Got to come out here at Factory. Ooh, that's a cool factory I like placement. That. Yeah, I was about Haven't to say, really it makes that. this entrance this, yeah. um, this much smaller. You always want to be in chokes in Terran versus Zerg. Uh, Zerg really needs surface area to take out the Terran army. Very important. Now, speedlings are done. The layer is almost done. The baneling nest is almost done. So, uh, looks like Maka going to do a little bit of a push here. But if uh, our Zerg player, the wind, gets wind of this... I was Ooh. actually going to say that before I realized that was his name. I don't always make terrible puns. Um, but if he does catch wind of a lot of move, units being in the middle of the map, he can just do an extra round of speedlings, go out, kill them, and he will have so many more units than his opponent that it's just a great position to be in. Nice job here from our Terran controlling the Zelnaga Watchtowers. Keeping the Zerg off the map. And he's going to do that right over here. Maka going to take out the wind circling over there. Just this overlord out here. Really not much you can spot for too. Now I've been watching this production tab and he has been making a lot of Zerglings, a lot of Banelings and Baneling speed. Just starting a Spire now. Going a later Spire uh, in order to get enough units to destroy this. And he is going to destroy this. That's a lot of Speedlings. And he's just going to retreat to creep. He will go after these Marines, though, in just a moment. Here he goes, going for a surround. And these Marines are going to die a horrible death. Really not a good play by Mac. Going to be all the way across this long map with that little group of units. Nice job by Maka. Excuse me, by the wind. Bad job by Maka, who um, can now actually get his entrance busted down if he's not careful. Yeah, and instantly up 20 supply because of that. Really poor decision making by Maka. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed that he did that. He's got to get this barracks oh up in time! My. This might actually just be a kill. Going after that bunker, and here goes with the Zergling surrounding Marines! And this is not good for Maka, man. He is in so much trouble here. But he does end up killing the Zerglings. The only problem is that he is, well, the supply is a lot more stabilized, but at the same time, Zerg has to be feeling superb in well, this position. Terran doesn't have an army. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you can just take this base up here, which he's going to do. The Zerg army is very cheap. It makes very fast. You actually, part of being good about Zerg is not having an army until the last second. So losing units like that doesn't really matter unless they're mutilists or investors. So he's traded a bunch of units for a bunch of units. It's going to be a long time before Maka can really attack again. And that means that the third base of the wind should be able to get up quite easily. Yeah, as you said... Uh, the Zerg army, very cheap, easy to get up very quickly. Uh, the Terran army, takes a little bit longer to get set up, with the exception of the Marines, they do come out fast, but everything else, mm. very different. So the Terran is kind of like the Whole Foods, you know, yeah, uh, of, of the game. It's actually a very good way to put it. And the it. Zerg is kind of like, you know, the 24-hour Walmart yeah. grocery section. Uh, nice, burrowing the Banelings yeah. over here. That is actually such a good move. Again, that's going to become so standard for anyone that makes Banelings. Uh, Really should have been a long time ago. People were so bad. I think everyone knew about it, was, but was like, well, I'm concentrating on so many different things I don't quite understand. I can't pull that off as well. But nowadays, as things get tighter, that is going to be so awesome. And Terrans are going to have to make a Raven. That's can't awesome. wait for that moment of the metagame to pick up here. Yeah. Now, the win, he may just want to force a stim from Maka. Mm. We see it, especially with the Korean Terrans, very uh, quick to get forced into stimming here. Yeah, it was very common in StarCraft 1, and, and uh, you mentioned the other day, which is very true, uh, medevac dropships, a lot more expensive, a lot harder to get than our medics in StarCraft 1, so uh, stimming is a really premium thing to do. The wind doing a good job of getting creep tumors everywhere. As you can see, three at once here, and he'll shoot out some more creep momentarily. And as we see, the supplies, they're pretty neutralized, but three bases against two. Takes out this depot. Mm -hmm. The wind, he did get ahead earlier on, so he's going to take this hatchery over here at the now, bottom right. I don't understand that hatchery. He should just make it on his side. He's in a great position right now. As long as he hits his overlords and makes the right unit compositions, it's going to be hard for Maka to do anything. But with the base on that side of the map, that's something Maka can actually kill very easily. 
A lot of this is going to come down to scouting. Will Maka look here when Zerg already has so much out of control for Stim. Well, let's look. The medevacs are going to be almost out of energy. Yeah, got to be careful. Those down to the 40s. Muta's getting ready to do some harassment. Going into the main. There's only one missile right there. He kills it really quick. Oh my, he's going to do a lot of damage to Maka's economy here. Killing a lot of SCVs. Beautiful moves, but Maka, he stims, he runs up. Forcing another stim and losing only one Muta after killing all that and forcing another stim. The wind makes a beautiful harassment move. Missile turret on the way over here. These banelings will be spotted ah. if uh, the wind doesn't do something about it. He made sure to force another stim. The wind's got to be feeling pretty good. And I believe that was another force stim. Really good position here for the wind. I do like the uh, the turret pushing though by Maka that you were just pointing out. Catches a few more Mutas. Ah. Well, now, a lot of siege tanks and whoa. a lot of marines. Uh-oh. Talk about sick macro. Yeah, seriously. That is so much. He does have 123 supply Damn. against the 135 of the wind. Let's see here. Looks like the medevacs are depleted or almost depleted of energy. And scanning to make sure nice. this isn't occurring. And this is great. It looks like Maka has caught on to this new trend. Realizes that it is so popular right now. Well, these banelings better hurry up and finish. That's right. Oh, loses a sea shank. Will he lose another sea shank? Huge! Another sea shank going down to the wind's mutas. Beautiful fungal growth. Fungal so good. Those marines were stemmed already. He may end up losing quite a few of them momentarily here as he does not have the energy to stem them anymore. Here we go! The banelings oh, come in no. through here. But too many banelings, too many mutas. Not enough of anything Terran related. And it looks like he does. It's almost an even army trade there. I actually thought the Zerg was going to clean up there. Yeah, he just he hit too many Banelings into those Siege Shanks. Yeah. Banes do almost no damage to Siege Shanks. They're really only for hitting Marines or very clumped up Marauders. Uh, you've got to be careful about that. They really should be on the move command almost always. Thor going to be dropped off over here with the rest of these units. The Thor can tank a lot of the damage from the Banelings. Also, when the Mutas are trying to harass and fly around, especially when they clump up, the Thor becomes invaluable. He's tank, very low on HP. He's going to try to retreat, regroup. He's going to need to make more medevacs. Right now, the wind no. is looking really good, by the way. He has a lot of the map right now. And just really good scouting and everything. Just everything is going very well for him. Maka needs a third base ASAP. Yeah. Zerg already with a fifth. You really can't stay on ooh, a greater spire going up. Awesome. A lot of Zerglings being made as well. As we see on the production tab. As we can see, the Banelings moving around. And now the wind. Uh oh, 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 hold that thought, hold that thought. Oh, if he finds this, Maka is going to have to GG. He can't lose these dropships. That was a good save there. Yeah, that was a very quick reaction there. And it looks like he's just going to try to walk up this back door, but the wind is going to have so many units up there, no possibility of him losing this base. Of course, Zerg can see the, whoops, excuse me, Zerg can see the rocks getting destroyed, or at least knows. Yeah, he, he knows what's going on. Maka scans, sees those banelings, and he is going to run away from that, I do think. Unless he wants to try to drop the Thor on the banes. He's like, well, wait a minute. Move. The units are like, what is over there? Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm going to peace out of here. Yeah, trying to get somewhere banelings are not. And right now, man, he just, there are so many bases for our Zerg player. And when that Greater Spire does finish, which it has just finished, it is going to be time. Uh-oh, looks like we have some Broodlords. Pretty scary. Broodlords, of course. The Broodlord into Ultralisk is one of the best tech switches in the game. You force the Vikings and then go Ultras, and Vikings are just so worthless against Ultras, I cannot even explain to you. Here comes the drop in the main. But we have a huge amount of units coming in, filtering in. So many Zerglings. Maka realizes, oh no, I actually should get out of here. But the Mutas are coming. Try to hit some dropships. And Maka, he's doing a good job of harassing. I love that Thor being there so the Mutas can't get too close. Oh, this is going to be brutal. Yeah, Maka ooh, is in a little bit of trouble. 
the wind is just getting further and further ahead supply-wise. The Broodlords are here, nibbling at this uh, refinery. I don't think Terran has actually anything at all to deal with this. He has two Vikings on the way. But Zerg already had some mutas. Yeah, this base is going to have to be lifted off, but he is taking another third. We have a drop over here. Oh, looks like this. A lot of Zerglings going in, though. Not going to be able to get anything really done with that, aside from killing a queen. Meanwhile, the Broodlords ripping this base to shreds. Yo, Vikings are being made by Maka right now, so hopefully he'll be able to clean up those broods. And these Marine Drops are really not doing very much right now. Probably best to send your medevacs home so you don't lose them. Now two Vikings out, but there are just so many Broods, man. They're still going to do a ton of damage, even if they all die. If these units don't exactly die as quickly as some other units in the game. Yeah. And I think this is a 1A, 2A, 3A moment. Just or a tag move. Yeah, we one a. Uh, We have MBS now. <laughs> that's right. So it looks like he's just going to send the rest of his army over here. Clean up the Terran. And it looks like Marines just stimming in, running in, killing the Broodlords off. Expensive losses there for both players. Whoa. Uh, more units lost for the wind, but Maka, of course, he is still sitting on basically two base, just got his third up, but his main is gone from the boss. And this is just not a happy position for him to be in. More and more uh, mutas coming out here now. Zerg doesn't seem to be aware, or at least doesn't do anything about this base. He doesn't know. Kind of silly for the wind not to have something here in this the one and only location he doesn't have occupied. <clears throat> Quite true. Landing a Viking. Who knows what about that one? Shouldn't have landed Viking. Yeah, but a lot of mutas. Nice little switch back in mutas. And ultras are being made as we see on the production tab. So uh that's the awesome switch we were talking about. You know, there's Vikings out there now. They don't hit ultras. <laughs> and even if you land them, they really don't. A lot of harassment here by the wind. Maka looking to be in trouble. He hit the round of eight last time, but he is looking like he may lose in the round of 32. At least the first game. Mutas actually go over these tanks here. Just doing whatever he can with the Mutas while he sets up his Ultralisk army. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, when the Ultralisks, enough of them get out there, I mean, there's really nothing Terran can do. That's right. At this point, our Zerg player is maxed out. Uh, only 140 for Maka, but Maka, he's got a lot of bases going. He's got a lot of siege tanks up. If he micros exceedingly well, he might be able to hold off the Zerg army for quite some time. The only problem is that bottom right Zerg base, Maka is not taking into consideration. He has no idea. He's never had any idea it's there, but now it looks like he's going to find it, and Maka is not going to be happy with what he sees. Maka Prime has got to be totally pissed right now. He didn't check this base. And that makes a huge difference. If oh, you think Zerg is on four bases, with these timings, but he's on the fifth, you're like, oh, now everything's making sense. This is why I'm getting crushed. He's gonna move down here. Oh, no, that... Ah, that's nice. a cute little move. You can always launch a few Terrans while burrowed. And here come the Ultras! A lot of Zerglings as well, taking so much damage. Sea Shanks taking as much as they can. The Thor taking huge amounts of damage, but it looks like just nothing left here for Maka. The Ultras clean up that army. Well, a Thor goes to kill this base. Looks like the Thor can and will kill it. And even though this Ultra dies, he has killed the majority of Maka's expensive units. It's so hard to replace Thors and Siege Tanks at this point in the game. Oh, of course. Even though he lost to the drones, <laughs> the drones uh, deaths was not in vain. The Thor is picked up. <laughs> Zerg keeps the hatchery and now a counterattack over here at Maka's base. Yeah, Maka is in so much trouble, man. He's at 93 supply to 170 of the wind. SCV's turn to fight the Zerglings. Oh. More Broodlords <laughs> tech switch here. Oh my. This uh, little flying uh, creature looks like a baby Broodlord. Yeah, it does. Maybe that's what the Overmind took in to make the Broodlord. Maybe. You get enough Broodlords and you don't have uh, Vikings, you actually cannot stop them. Yeah, it's. I mean, they have to really misuse them, get them under Marines. Uh, and there and it is, GG. Wow, the wow, wind. Wow. Great play, actually, from the wind. He just he handled every situation very well. Uh, Maka, I'm a little bit disappointed with that first attack he made. Yeah. I, and 
The thing is, when you lose a bunch of units like that, you actually lost, what was that, maybe 10 or 11 Marines and a couple of Marauders in that first yeah. attack. And that allowed for the wind to go over trade Zerglings that he used to clean those units up for even more units at Maka's Natural. And that actually set Maka's timing attack way back. Yeah. He had way less units than he could have had. Imagine if he had had in that battle where they actually equalized armies. If he had had, and I keep saying had had, but that is proper English as far as I know. <laughs> but if he had had that many more units, which was what? It probably turned out to be 18 Marines and yeah. maybe a handful of Marauders. More in that battle... He actually would have crushed the wind's army. I don't know if you should have even attacked in cross positions like that. Yeah, that That's first attack, where you, where you definitely not. Apply some pressure, but pull away. Exactly. I don't know if it was a good idea to commit like that. I don't know what he expected to, to gain from that situation, but yeah. uh, you know, he is a good player. Maybe he knew something we didn't, but no. did it seem to make a lot of sense? No. Possible. No, we could see the whole map. We knew. We knew. Um, but you know, seriously, just, I don't think you should have done that. Definitely shouldn't have gone across the map. That's where it all went wrong for Maka. It piled up from there. I think these two would be very evenly matched if Maka doesn't make another mistake like that. So yeah. we're going to have to see. The next map is Zelenar Caverns. This is a map everyone's been playing a lot longer than Shakuras uh, Plateau. So I think that we're going to see a much better game here. Let's Looks like it's time to start. Tasers. It's time to start. Let's go.